Paul Rellis, it's wonderful to have you with us here today. Thanks a million. Um, we were just saying before we started this that it's been quite a few years since we met. I think you were CEO of Microsoft Ireland the last time we sat down together to do an interview. Um, and were you 17 years at Microsoft between the various roles, if, if, if I understand correctly? So, and, and now, of course, you're the Vital Technology Group, and I want to hear all about that. But could you start maybe by telling us a little bit about your journey, how you started with Microsoft, and kind of that journey through in the 17 years, and I think you were in various countries. Yeah, so great to be here, Anne, and great, great to talk to you, and fantastic to see you after, after all this time. Uh, look, it feels like... Last week I was 25, you know, and, and suddenly I'm, I'm, I'm 55 and, you know, I spent 17 years at Microsoft and I'm four years now at, at Viatel. And, you know, Microsoft was a, an absolutely fantastic experience, brilliant company, great people. Uh, I learned and developed so much. Um, and I think we really underestimate what companies like that have done in Ireland for so many people. Uh, who, who, you know, they've invested in people, employed so many people, grown so many people. And, you know, it's been, uh, for me personally, a fantastic journey. I joined Microsoft in, 2000, in January 2000, actually. Uh, so we were living in Germany before that, and uh, our first two kids were born in Germany. We lived there for almost five years. And I wanted to come back to Ireland more than my wife did, actually. And if I go back a little bit before that, before we moved to Germany, Lisa said to me, there's two countries in the world I don't want to go to. One is Germany and one is Japan. And we ended up going to Germany. She ended up loving Germany more, much more than I did, actually. And, you know, we had a lovely life there. And, and we moved back in, in January 2000. And, and the reason I did was I wanted to join a leader uh, in the technology industry. And Microsoft at the time, if you remember, if you go back to that time, uh, Microsoft was very much a leader, but was still in the crosshairs of the Department of Justice. And at the time, there was even rumours of Microsoft being split into a platform company and an applications company. And I remember joining and then uh, signing up and leaving my previous job, which was the Coca-Cola company, also a fantastic company. And we went on holidays to Mexico, actually, in between moving back to Ireland. And I remember walking down the street in Mexico and seeing a Financial Times newspaper, pre-internet, pre-mobile phone, in a shop window saying, you know, uh, big decision, will Microsoft be split to between a Windows company and an Office company, or a platform company and an applications company? Um, needless to say, I didn't, didn't buy that paper and bring it back to the hotel and show Lisa. <laughs> but it was a very, uh, a very tumultuous time in Microsoft's um, history. And I suppose it, it really made me aware of how quickly things can change in a technology world, in a technology company. And uh, fortunately, Microsoft got on the right track over time and uh, got through that very difficult period and, and evolved to be a phenomenally successful company in the last years. It was quite a brave decision to go to them when at a time like that. Yeah, it was, but you know, it's the, it, was a, it was a leader in the, tech, in the technology world. Um, I loved and still love the productivity aspect of technology. I'm not an engineer, I'm an accountant, so I, you know, I, I, I'm more on the use side than the, than the creation side. Um, and, you know, yeah, at some point in your life, you've got to take some risks to, to really expand and, 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 and run ahead. And, you know, switching, I suppose it's the advice I've often given people is, you know, you can switch between industries, you can switch between companies, you can switch between jobs, you can switch between countries, but don't try to do all of those at once. Uh, I should probably have followed my own advice a little bit better. <laughs> And it was, a, at the time we would have sat down, it was a, such an interesting time, like the born of the internet companies didn't really exist. You know, it was, it was like Microsoft, IBM, Intel were kind of the, almost the core here in Dublin and were kind of the core of the industry. It's, um, it's amazing how much Dublin has changed. Well, what do you think about Ireland's situation now? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. If you, if you go back 20 years, it was very much Wintel, IBM, you know, Dell, there was, there was a couple of big, big, big global companies. And of course now that's exploded into lots of companies providing lots of services. And many of them are, are, are housed here in Dublin. Um, it's, it's fantastic from an from a opportunity perspective for people. Uh, the opportunities people have today to choose 
company X, company Y is, is absolutely amazing. And, and it means you can focus on trying to find the right fit for yourself and, and it forces companies to be, uh, to be better organized too and to be much more open to all kinds of people, all kinds of talents, because if they don't, they just won't get the people. Yeah, I love that change. That's one of the changes that I really love. It, it's Dublin has become that bit more cosmopolitan and will continue to. I'd like yeah. to think, you know, that the different cultures coming in and people having to be more accepting of it, I hope, will continue. Oh, yeah, of course. And, and, and at the same time, retaining our, our unique identity of being Irish. And we never want to lose that and the really positive aspects of that. So on the whole, I think Ireland is, is and Dublin is, you know, really well positioned. Um, you know, I think the the thing I'd love to see more and more is more people moving out of the bigger organisations over time and into Irish companies, and you know, taking all the learnings they have done there and. And, and kind of bringing it to life in, in other companies. And that's happening more and more, which is great it to is. see. It is. I think we all hope to see. to see more of that, yeah. but I do think that's starting maybe to, to grow a bit now. And, and it's, as, as I don't have to tell you, it's not just Dublin and uh, Viatel Technology Group, which you're going to tell me a bit more about now and, and where you're at, um, have offices in Limerick and Dublin and elsewhere. Dundalk. And Dundalk is the yeah. other one, there you go. Um, so the regional development is becoming quite interesting as well, I think. Um, so last four years with Viatel, interesting time to join any organisation because the last two and a half years have been so strange. That said, of course, there's been such a digital transformation, to use the buzzword, but a, a kind of a digital revolution where people it's, it's been so accelerated, the growth in how people use digital, uh, you know, for, for work, for business, for everything. I presume it must be a pretty fascinating time for Viatel and challenging in its own way as well. Yes, look, I, I joined there four, four and a bit years ago and uh, we have a fantastic uh, team of people, great customer base. Our business is predominantly focused in, in Ireland, although we're starting to look abroad now as well and look at the next five years and see how we can be much more, much more impactful. Um, and it was a, uh, a, um, a very strange period actually over the last two and a half years where just like this, things were, were switched off. We in Viatel were designated as um, a key uh, industry uh, because we have telecoms infrastructure and data centers and, and so on. And of course, a lot of our guys, a lot of our people, our team were out there keeping the lights on over the last two, two years in the toughest of times for our businesses, for, you know, for consumers, for themselves. And so we really feel like we've played a big role in doing that. And um, you, know, you look at, the, you look at the, the positive aspects of the last couple of years, more remote working, meaning people have more time at home, you know, people can be more productive, uh, you know, people travel less, so better impact on the environment and so on. That's balanced by, you know, the loss of social capital and people being together, which is a worry I have for the longer term, is it's just not good to be on your own all the time. Yeah, it is. It, it's, uh, and I've spoken to so many people about this and I don't think anybody knows exactly how it's going to go, but there's, there's going to have to be something in the middle, isn't there? I, I do think some people cope better, I suppose, without the social capital than others, but we're losing connection, aren't we? Yes, and that's, that, I, I think that's a, a real challenge, actually, and you, you can feel it yourself, you know, when, when the lights came back on, whenever that was, you know, months back, it was a little bit strange to be around people again, at least I felt that. Oh, You're kind of, I think we all did. Yeah, and, and so we're, we're a bit more used to it now, and people are travelling again and going on holidays, and so, you know, I think there was a thought that we would just snap back into the way it was before. And it's not quite like that, actually. No, 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 it's so true. And I mean, tell us a little bit more about the business of Vital and how it's going. So Vital started life as a, as a telecoms company uh, in um, you know, 20 odd years ago and uh, was brought together through acquisition and growth of businesses um, and has a very successful con uh, consumer brand called DigiWeb. We have a very successful business brand called Viatel, and we acquired Action Point, uh, a very successful uh, managed services partner and cloud computing partner in, in Limerick last year. So, you know, we're bringing those businesses together. We're growing 
extremely well, which is, which is great. We have just shy of 300 people now. Uh, we, have, we had 100 people when I joined, or slightly more than 100 people. Uh, we've, we've trebled our size uh, in the last four years. And it sounds like it was all plain sailing and all, all very easy. And, and of course it wasn't, you know. The first two years of, uh, of, of my time there, we really had to focus on getting ourselves right, getting the team right, the products right, customer service, all those, all those things. And, and then we've, you know, we've, we've grown pretty well and we have the right products and solutions for the time we're in. And so there are, there are very few times in business where you have that really good feeling of momentum behind you. And, and that's, a, that's the feeling we have right now, actually. That's marvellous. Um, and I suppose then going back to kind of the whole area of, of, of leadership, I suppose, in your various leadership roles, including this one, um, are there sort of big lessons or learnings that stand out or big challenges that, that you, you remember? Yeah, I think the, the first for me, you know, is, is about, um, about every leader being uh, on top of themselves, being really comfortable with their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, and understanding their limitations. Um, so, you know, I'd be strongly encouraging every leader in our business, and we have terrific leaders in our business, to understand their own strengths and weaknesses and, you know, really take those to heart and try and improve on those themselves over time so that they're, they're walking the talk. Because when people see, you know, more senior people or leaders focusing on themselves, trying to improve themselves, taking all their holidays, you know, being energised, you know, doing all the right things. It really makes a difference, actually. Do you think that, that something really positive that could come out of the pandemic is that maybe people, a lot of the leaders I've been meeting in any case, they seem to have focused back on themselves a little bit more about what makes them tick. Do you, is it something you've seen? Yeah, I think it's probably what I've noticed is people are more focused on what makes them satisfied, mm -hmm. what makes them happy, mm -hmm. and have in, at various stages made decisions of, I'm going to go and move and live somewhere that I really want to live, mm -hmm. or I'm going to change the job I'm in, or I'm going to improve myself and do things that I really enjoy doing in my life, in my work. And uh, you see that quite a lot, actually. Yeah. And I think it's a very good thing. Yeah, I think, it, I think it really could be. And I think, ironically, it could be really good for business. In a funny way, maybe we had kind of reached peak sort of productivity and, and sort of leaders being so focused and kind of forgetting about themselves. So it, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, that, that greater empathy and everything in the, in the coming years. But I'm sure there's many. But if you, if you had to pick out a sort of a career highlight or a fantastic memory from your... I, w I won't count the number of years, but in, in business. Career highlights. Um, probably the biggest highlights for me have been, have, have, have been about people in the organisations I've worked with um, stepping up as leaders. Mm. And I have tons of examples from when I worked in Coca-Cola, from when I worked in Microsoft and from Viatel today, where people that we've identified as leaders and that I've tried to help have really stepped up and you can see the progression and that is so satisfying when you see people doing that. It is one of the more, more rewarding things, it's, it's so true actually. Um, yeah and we've touched on this a little bit but you know the, the, the pandemic obviously accelerated huge change in the way we work and working remotely and everything. I know that affects you from a business point of view but from a team point of view how have you guys all coped through the pandemic and you know what, what have you seen look it's it's um it was a real challenge to move from being together every day or you know a few times a week to not being physically together and trying to have calls and teams and zooms and we actually went out and got a coach for our leadership team someone to help us with this actually and she has been fantastic um, and so that has made a in my mind one of the biggest differences uh, positive differences so helping us all understand you know not what kind of behaviors behaviors you should use on a zoom call or a team's call but how to build trust for first of all as a team and, and really identifying the parts of our team culture 
that we valued together. And so what were the things that we really valued together and what were the differences between people, or differences that, things that we didn't agree on and understanding both of those. And so we've met with her three, four times a year over the last couple of years, always in person actually, except during the, the toughest of the COVID times and, and really built on that. That's very clever. Uh, so many, again, of the people I'm talking to are saying the biggest challenge is actually for the, the managers and the leaders. Sure. For them to accept the change and, and, and how, how to make it work right, you know. Yeah. So that's, that's interesting that you actually went out and got that outside got help. help. I like yeah. it. I like it. That's you know, everybody needs help. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. No one had the answer. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't even think we're sure we have the right answer, but we have an answer that works pretty well for us actually. And so in a year's time, two years time, we may have to change that and you know, take a different approach. Yeah, I think that goes for all of us. You know, I don't think anybody would pretend to know exactly how it's going to work, but it, 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 as you say, the trick is to find the answer for now. But, um, and again, you would have touched on some of this, but you know, the nature of leadership and leading people, I suppose as well. Um, like what, what would you admire in a good leader or the good leaders you've seen over the years and what kind of a leader do you aspire to be yourself? Yeah, you know, it's, if, if I look back on, my, on, on the leaders I've worked with over the years, um, I'm always drawn to two people that, I, that were, that were my, my boss over the years who were terrible leaders and actually forced me away from them to really good leaders. And, and that happened twice in my career. And, and I learned a lot from that. You're um, not going to name them? No, of course not. <laughs> not <laughs> no, even I am the companies. joking, no, don't no. worry. <laughs> but look, you know, the people, you know, it's good and bad yeah, yeah. in, in every yeah. organization. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the good leaders gave me the confidence that I could deliver more and do more than I thought I could. And uh, they showed empathy, they showed understanding, they listened, um, had to give me some tough medicine, of course, along the way, and helped me a lot. Now, by inference, you can assume that the bad leaders didn't do, or did the opposite of all of those things. Yeah. So, you know, I hope that um, I can help and the rest of our leaders in our business can help people in our business to, uh, to, to grow themselves. And, and we have a few, I suppose, values you'd call them, um, or cultural attributes that, that we really want to live by and have others live by, and that is to try to be 1% better every day. Just small incremental improvements over time make a massive difference. And that starts with each of us trying to be 1% better in what we do every day. Um, and then secondly, we, we value growth over comfort. So, you know, sometimes people say, slow down, why don't we slow down and do this properly and then go on to the next thing. Sometimes we just don't have time for that. We have to go, grow, if we don't grow fast, somebody else is going to, and that's going to eat us in a, in a year's time, two years time, three years time. And the third one is really to take, um, to value long-term growth over a quick buck, over short-term gain. Because we've all learned over the years, if you do something short-term, if you go for a quick short-term gain, it's once and it's gone and you'll get much more value um, and many more people behind you know, a long-term sustainable growth plan. So those are the things that we're really trying to get in place. Very good. Um, yeah, I, I always like to ask people this because uh, you know, we, we often talk about sort of getting to know sort of the whole person during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, we saw people's dogs and parents yeah. and all the rest of it. Can you tell us something about yourself that people might not know or that people might be surprised by? We have a dog and a cat. Maybe that's not, not so surprising. Um, yeah, look, the thing, thing that, that I love doing is traveling. Um, so I have been to more than 45 countries. I think it's 46 wow. in, my, in, my, in my life. And hopefully I'm only halfway through that and I, I get to the next 46. So I like to travel a lot, take all of our holidays, you know, enjoy things, plan holidays really well. And so... That might not be surprising for people, but generally it is. I like it. I like it. And I suppose finally, and again, you've given some great advice already, but, you know, for, we'd say young aspiring leaders or current leaders starting out, 
if you were to give maybe one key piece of advice to them today? Take all your holidays. And, and by, you can gather there's a holiday theme and travel theme. By that I mean, look after yourself. Take your time, focus on yourself, take time out for yourself, identify the things that you're really good at and the things that you need help on. Get a coach to help you identify that, get a mentor, get a friend. Um, and once you've got those things, things figured out, your self-confidence will be much higher and people will, will understand that and see that a lot more. And you will have more impact that way. And if you try to do that regularly, so be 1% better at that all the time, you'll do really well. I think that's a wonderful note to end on. It's a wonderful piece of advice. I love it. I need to take it myself. <laughs> Paul, so it where are you going your holidays then? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere this year, but I, I'm going to the burn. I will. I'll find okay. time to go to the burn without without fail. It's where I always go. Paul, it was fantastic to have you here and and to chat with you about leadership and a little bit more about Viatel. So um, thanks a million. Thank you very much, Anne.